I get the honors first? <laughs> I am not prepared for what I'm about to say. It's all off the head because we're busy on the farm. And I didn't know what was all going on today, but basically I'm going to do my best I can. First of all, all the people that's helped from, the, from Mike's loss, uh, thank you very much. All the community people, the organizations that have come forth to help us put this plan together. And when we lost Mike, we had to do something to, to basically help people from this tragedy happening to their, their family or anybody else. I never thought, and I don't think none of us thought, this magnitude of this would ever happen to what it is today. Um, there are so many people that from every part of the state, from other states, have all come together, give us ideas, and people from the monitoring uh, sector have all give us good tidbits, and put a help between my family and all the community, I thank you. And from there, I'm gonna go and tell the story of Mike. Mike was 29 years old. He loved farming. <laughs> He, that's all he wanted to do was farm. And from morning till night, he loved what he did. He was the kind of kid that he would be so proud to have. He basically felt guilty. He was 29, he was single. He says, I hate going out till the sun goes down. He says, because there's always stuff I could be doing. That was Mike. And whenever we worked at a farm, whatever we did, if it was good or bad, we shared it with our neighbors to benefit them. And that was the key a lot of people respect Mike and I for because we shared our, our, our triumphs and tragedies to everybody. We were not basically bragging, but we shared our bad moments along with our good ones. And a lot of people respected us because we helped tell the story to them how they could do a better job with putting irrigation in to make their land more productive and how to utilize center pivots to work for them or other irrigation practices and working with Mike, Mike Love Cattle. And Mike would share things he learned by going to night classes. And he went to Fox Valley Tech in Appleton. He went to Marshfield uh, Tech School here for a year. And when Mike was in school, he was not an honor student. He was average at best. Once he got out of school, he found his niche and he just took off like there was no tomorrow. He could figure things out and he, he excelled in it. And the story is Mike was the victim of a bad accident. Basically, he got up, it'll be the year August 15th, at three o'clock in the morning to start an agitator up to agitate the manure. And basically, I got up at four o'clock that morning, I, I went to the bathroom, I see Mike was running the tractor and the lights were on and everything was a plan because milk manure haulers were coming at 6.30. All of a sudden, I was up around six o'clock and all dressed up and the hired man called me, he says, Mike is gone, he was, he's dead. We found Mike and he was gone and basically the story is it was a perfect worst storm. Mike went out there to check, he had his pickup sitting there and he was watching the manure pump agitate the pit. He broke the crust and the weather was warm and when he broke the crust the gases came up and we had an overcast morning but fog and no wind and everything hung over the pit and he got out, to, out of his pickup to look at it was agitating properly and he was overcome with the gas and he was killed instantly. And it was, it's very hard to this day to talk about it, but we lost 16 head of cattle through that ordeal and Mike. And I guess our goal is to, to do something that we never knew anything about because I guess I'll back up one step here. From the day Mike and I talked about putting the manure pit on our farm to the day Mike died, no one ever mentioned a word about an open manure pit to be cautious of gases. And we find out this is an option here that can happen. And our, our mission is here to hopefully bring safety and awareness to everybody in our community and the state for starts so this doesn't happen to their family. Because if nothing, nobody really wants, believe me. I guess. I guess that's about all I can think about saying at this time. So if you want to say something, Lise. Well, after we were <clears throat> finding out after what caused Mike's death, um, we did some research, especially my mom did with the hydrogen sulfide. We did find out there's another incident in Pennsylvania. I don't remember what year, was it 2012? Yes. And there was two little children that were overcame by hydrogen sulfide 
in a near open pit riding their bikes. And to us, it was because of gypsum bedding, not the not from corn byproducts, which is probably what the scenario was was causing the hydrogen sulfide in Mike's case. And it, it hurt us knowing back in 2012 that this happened and not finding out about it until this year. And we want to make sure that everybody's aware that just because Mike had that overdome gas or the overdome with the weather situation, hydrogen sulfide is still very present when open manure pits. And that's what we want to share. And that's why we're offering the rebate program and offering to do this monitor program. Because we don't want this tragedy to happen to somebody else. Um, we decided to do this gift. <laughs> I guess I don't want you to go away, but we decided to do this monitor program that people could rent these monitors versus buying them because there's a lot of things involved when you get a gas monitor. We weren't aware of it until we got involved here. Basically, when you get a gas monitor, these are multi-gas monitors, they need to be calibrated. On a quarterly basis. Oh, right. And it can be very expensive. It can be about $150 estimate per time, and that's done four times a year. And you know how farmers are. They're busy. They're in a hurry. They're not going to remember to go get it calibrated. They're going to be running to the last minute. By offering the rental program, it's going to allow farmers to have that monitor come. It'll be already calibrated, ready to go, um, and ready for farmers to use. So they don't have to worry about that being ready and to make sure that everybody's safe. Um, so we decided to start this program. We were very, very lucky to work with the Farm Medicine Center here and to help us with outreach and everybody to put this program together. It's, it means the world to us. Um, and I guess we want to also thank for everybody that has supported us for this cause of my Biotish Farm Safety and Education Fund. It started out, you know, when we were making fuel, funeral arrangements, and we didn't expect it to be this big by any means. We've had the outreach of support by people donating their cattle at, at fairs, animal sales. animal sales, their prized possession, and auctioning it off, people buying pigs for them and then they sell it back and whatever proceeds remain went to Mike's Fund. People that just did in-kind donations. The Mike's Birthday Bash to everything to the Amherst Fair where we had some raffle tickets that were donated. And everybody's support. We cannot thank everybody enough for keeping this going. And we want to keep this going because we want to keep people safe. Um, so in the near future we do want to have the rebate program. First of all we're going to start in the state of Wisconsin and we do want to maybe see how that goes and maybe try to move it into more states and try to protect other farmers. I guess the other thing with, with these gas monitors, if you do buy them, we start going to give you a rebate of some sort. But the problem is if you buy them, there's a lot of added cost in buying the calibrations, gases, and all the other equipment you need. Our recommendation is for everybody that wants to be involved in doing some farm safety with their employees and family is use them for a while, get familiarized with them. You'll see what they do, and I think it's a good option. This way you don't have the big investment with tight economic conditions on agriculture, no matter if it's with dairy markets, they're soft, cattle, finished cattle, that's a roller coaster and stuff like, even with hogs, I mean, they got their ups and downs also. But if you basically have to pay 75 or 100 bucks a monitor a week for rent, and you have the ability to protect you and your employees and family, I think it's a very good option to get educated to see how these monitors actually work. I guess that's all, and thank you very much for everything here.